Hi there, everyone. It's Tracy Mode, and I wanted to come on here, come on and do a video of trying out these core watercolors for the first time. I've heard so much about them, how vibrant they are, and I just have never got around to trying them. And Blick had this set of 12 uh, introductory colors on sale. So it was, geez, it was uh, pretty inexpensive. They are pan colors. I've never, um, I don't use pan colors. I use tube colors for the most part, but I wanna see how these work. And I've also been wanting to paint a fish. <laughs> so I'm gonna do both at the same time and we're gonna paint a rainbow trout in this video. And I've transferred my a little fishy here onto my paper and I'm using Arches 140 cold press. And so let's open this. I'm really excited to just see, see how, how these paints are on when I'm painting them in real life. Maybe I won't ever be able to do it because I can't get the packaging off. Uh, even with a exacto knife, I'm surprised I'm not cutting myself. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get the packaging off. And again, core watercolors. They come in tubes also, and you can get those on Blick. And I can leave a link down in the description. So that's kind of a cool palette to begin with. Um, I'm gonna protect my little drawing there. So let's take the top off. Boy, I'm really struggling here. Okay, there we go. And, oh, they are tubes. Oh, well, that's cool. I was thinking they were, um, I was thinking they were like um, cakes, little cakes of color. And so this is really awesome. I'm excited. And they've got a little sheet in here with all their colors. And that's really cool too. I'll keep that around. But, oh, let's see. What do I want to try? This is a trout, a rainbow trout. So I'm going to probably, let's see. I think I'll get a different palette. I'm going to get a little ceramic one see if i can put it in a good spot and then i'll just squeeze out a little bit of the color onto this little area i've been wanting to try out the nickel azo yellow so i think i'll put a little of that on on my palette squeeze out i probably am not going to use very much, so I sure don't want to waste the color by putting too much out there. Although you can re-wet these things and um, they re-wet well, I'm sure. So Quinacridone Gold Deep, that's another good one. I'm gonna add that. I might be adding more as I go along, but I'm gonna really try to work quickly. Let's see, how about, um, what do we got here? This is a permanent alizarin. I've got quinacridone magenta, um, burnt sienna. I might use a little bit of that. Let's do burnt sienna. Get some natural colors on here. Rainbow trout are fun because they've got color in them. So I'm gonna do just the fish and then maybe do some splashy color around that. I've got ultramarine blue and a thalo green shade. Let's go with the thalo green shade. I've got some deep kind of greens up in the upper part of this fish, Mr. Trout. And how about, I think, I, I think I will put the Hansa yellow. So we're gonna mix our greens. There is a Viridian green on here. I might end up with a little of that, I'm not sure, but um, I've got some Thalo red light. Let's do that. Uh, and the Quinacridone magenta. I'm gonna try all of these. 
little tiny dabs. I really am not using very much. This is such a small little area to paint. So Quinectrodone Magenta is what I want. I want a nice bright stripe on this little fishy. So let's see. Reds are really strong, so I'm not gonna use very much of that. Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside. Those are the colors I did not use. And just gonna get started. I've got a couple of Utrecht brushes here, a number 10 and a number six that you can't see the writing on because I've used it so much. It's worn all the writing off. We're gonna get started with a number six and just start mixing up some of these colors. Um, let's see. Gonna get some yellow and some blue and mix up. Actually, I think I'll start in this. It's gonna beat up because it's new, but let's get a little of that phthalo. That's what I said, right? Phthalo blue, green shade. And how about a little of the that was burnt sienna. I have quinactrodone gold. Yes. How about that one? Quinactrodone gold deep. Look at that beautiful color. Oh, so exciting. I'm gonna go with more of the blue. So I'm gonna come up here into this uh, upper area of Mr. Fishy. And I think I'm gonna get ready in my palette over here. I don't think you can see it, can you? Maybe. No, you can't. I'll try to bring it over, but I'm gonna get a little, look at that, Quinactrodone. Quinactrodone magenta. That's gonna be part of the rainbow of my rainbow trout. Um, let's see. I want to make sure that I have clean blue. What I'm going to do in my head is transition from the green by putting blue in between the green and the magenta so we don't get um, those colors muddied up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start with a little pass of water up here and come all the way over and all the way down. Got a little fuzz on my paper. More fuzz, okay. <laughs> Don't know where that's coming from, but I'm just gonna start with this beautiful, ooh, look at that. And as I look at that, I'm thinking it is a little on the green side. So I want to add a little bit of this magenta to my puddle here and gray that down a little bit. Look at how beautiful that color is. Oh my, a little bit more blue. I'm going to exaggerate this color up here. And because there's water on my paper, oh, isn't that gorgeous? I don't have to stick with the colors that this uh, fish is either. I can play around and make it a true rainbow trout if I want. But I'm just playing around, letting these colors just flow around. And this is where I want the, I do want somewhat of a, similar look. I like the way that's happening. I don't know if you could see that. Let's see. I'm trying to learn how to zoom, so bear with me. Can you see this? So cool. Yeah, even a little bit more. Here, let's zoom in a little bit more. This little color right in here and the way it's separating, that is so Cool. Back out. Okay. Can't do that too much. I don't want my paint to dry, so I'm going to keep on coming down with that blue. And here's where I'm going to add in 
Mr. Rainbow's Rainbow. And some more green up in here. Clean that brush off and come through here. I want to get this wet all the way down. Try to keep my paper from drying out. Just being really playful and splashy. Let's get a little of the yellow. And here. This is really fun. Look at that color. I'm gonna go with the, uh, ooh, there's that Nicolazo yellow. I've not had that before, but I've heard it is, um, it is green gold, basically. And I wanna come in with something that's not gonna gray down the color, look at that spread, that's so cool. Again, that magenta, I'm loving that. I'm gonna drop a little in there, that is really fun. And a little bit more magenta down in here. And even uh, coming outside of lines a little bit is just um, fun. It makes it interesting. And then over here in the tail, let's add a little bit of green, actually a little bit more blue. And then I wanna get that wet. Get that wet, blend those colors together. I really like the way this paint is flowing around when I touch it to the paper, it just spreads. It's like a wildfire. It's so beautiful. Uh, yeah, a little bit more of the blue. Like I said, exaggerating the colors is um, something that we can do as artists and it really makes things very interesting. So I want a little touch of the, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. I love it. I love that. Look at this. This is so gorgeous. I love the back of this fish. So what I have heard about this paint is that it, a lot of times colors that you use dry um, and fade. And I think what I remember hearing is that this doesn't tend to do that. It, it'll dry more like what you uh, laid down in the first place. So that's cool too. So beautiful. I love the tail. Um, this is really cool. And let me add a little bit more bright pops of yellow in here. This is going to be orange. I don't know if that's gonna be such a great idea because I had green on my brush. Um, let's see. Clean it up and start over. And I think I'll go with the Nicolazo instead anyway. And then grab a little of that orange. I really like how it, uh, how it flows around in that wet paper. So I got that wet and I'm gonna pop in a little bit of that, a little bit more yellow. And I'm just, with that right there, what I did with my brush was I put it down on the paper and then flicked it to the side, dragging it along the paper. Always good to have a swatch so you can um, practice that stuff. So let's see, this little fin right here needs to be put in. Again, going with a little exaggerated color. 
Look at that. That is so stinking fun. Love that look. And how about a little more of this red up here? And put a little blue in there with it so it's more violet. And there's some green. Let's see what kind of green I get with that. Hence a yellow light. That's pretty. And I can wait until that dries. I don't want to mess with it while it's still wet because it's not got a sheen on it. So that means it's the danger zone. I don't want to come in over that until it's drier. This was a little bit drier. That is super fun. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I think this is a good point to let it dry and then come back and take a look at what we can do next. Okay, this is dry. Um, and I do think I wanna brighten up some of the color. So I'm gonna come with a bigger brush actually, cause I'm gonna do a little bit of a wash glaze over the top of some of this. I'm going back to my green area here mixing up some more of that look at how pretty that color is oh my goodness these are these really are gorgeous i can see a difference i could just be in trouble because now i'll need to go buy more more new paints um so i want to come up here and layer a little bit with that so let me think here um i'm going to add some water to these I do want to stick with the deeper green to start with. So let's see. Let's go with the nickel azo. And add that in there. Look at that green. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's almost like hooker's green. It's got a look like that. It's pretty close to hooker's green. So then I'm... Um, Let's add some burnt sienna, a little bit more blue. A little bit of the red and that neutralizes and deepens that. So now we've got a deeper green. Okay, I'll start with that and um, start glazing a little bit over the top of that. Ooh, I think I want it bluer. I'm not real interested in keeping this too realistic. And then I want to come down with a little bit more of that yellow. Transition into the blue again. I like how the yellow went over, glazed over the top and still left that little light sparkle there. And how about that mixture of the bright green? That's pretty. I'm loving this. Very cool. Okay, and more More of that magenta. I'm gonna come in here and add a couple of touches of that. Get a little extra water on my brush. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna transition a little bit to yellow and come down with some more of the blue. So I've got the yellow in between the red and the blue because I don't want green right in there. I want it to stay bright. I love that. That's really cool. And I'm just getting a little extra moisture off my brush and coming up here and softening that a bit.
That's pretty cool. And I've got just a touch of the belly blue there. I'm very excited about these colors. And then I think I want to just come over, glaze a little bit of blue over that, and let that float around. Very, very beautiful. And then how about in here? I think I want a little bit more of the pure magenta. And then I'm gonna to go to a smaller brush. I've got a number two Velvet Touch by Princeton. And I'm gonna neutralize my blue with my Burnt Sienna and a little touch of that magenta and just come right top of that and the eyeball. Add a little line there. And these fish have speckles. So I'm gonna be adding some of that here in a second. I've got a little violet going on with my magenta and ultramarine blue. Can't see it because it's over here, so I'll bring it closer. So that makes a really beautiful purple. And I'm just getting a little bit of a shadowy area in there. But I do also want to do some splattering. I like this up here. It's a little bit lighter and it's got some speckles. Not quite that dark though. Which I want to add some of that. We're going to just speckle this guy. This fin is still a little bit wet, which I kind of like because I get a little bit of softening. It's kind of like a fan and it's just spreading out. There's some spots up here. These guys are really super speckly. I can do this and then I'll spec uh, drop in or uh, splatter in some. Some of them may be needing to be a little bit more controlled by me. Okay, let's see how a little bit of splatter might work. But I think before I do that, I might just float in a little bit of color. I don't want a lot though. I just want a little bit of Just a little bit. I don't want to take away from my fish. So I'm trying to keep this pretty simple and light. I do kind of like how that's forming a bit of a line down here, so I might go with a little bit more of that. And I could encourage some flow with a little bit of spritzes of water. I don't know if that's necessary though.
but how about just a little touch there at the bottom? I don't know, maybe that overdid it. We'll see, soak some of it up. This brush I'm using here is an uh, oval wash by Princeton. It's a Neptune and it's really, really great for doing some splishy, splashy uh, kinds of paint applications. It holds a ton of paint and water. As you can see, my paper is plenty wet right now. I'll soak up a little bit of that. Okay, and on to, onto a little splatter. So maybe don't like that quite, quite that much. Looks like that uh, phthalo blue is pretty staining. So you might wanna just adjust in a different way. a little bit of movement that's kind of fun just kind of scraping along through that paint kind of looks like he's swishing down doesn't it okay so like i started to say let's do a little splashing hoping my head isn't in this video i apologize if it is so i'm gonna get some darker speckles going and I want to do let's do a nice deep purple look at that oh my gosh so pretty okay now to darken the blue and magenta which makes my violet in order to darken that and get it more neutralized for the speckles that I want on this fish I'm going to add some of that burnt sienna, maybe some of the red too. So that's a nice neutral gray. And this paintbrush splatters pretty good. I can control where it goes fairly easily by getting it real close. Hey, I like that. I think I'm gonna leave it like it is and just, um, no, I'm not gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna, <laughs> and then I'm gonna put ink around it. I really think that'll uh, make this pop. So how about actually before I do that, mixing a little bit more blue and coming with some fun splatters. And adding a little bit more violet to that, just to vary it up a little bit. And I'm gonna dab off just a tiny touches of that because I don't want all of it to be quite so dark. So just touch out a little, that's gonna stay. And then we're gonna put ink around this. Okay, so I'm using a Micron uh, number 808. And this is a archival ink marker, Micron, like I said. I also might uh, throw a little little touches of titanium white in here. So I'm getting that ready and I need my number one. So I've got an, my number one Utrecht on hand ready to go. And I'm just gonna, with my marker, outline my fish and I again, don't need to worry so much about staying in exactly where the paint is. I think I need new markers. This paper is, um, like I said, it's a cold press. 
rough. Um, and this end on the fishy tail, I am intentionally going past my paint. And I'm gonna dot, dot, dot. More in here. That's really fun. Um, what else was I going to do? I was going to come in with that white. And I also have um, a white acrylic marker that could be kind of fun. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of white in some of these areas. Just add a little sparkle. Actually, I think I like that a little bit on the pinker side. There we go. Just like that, you fixed it. And little touches of sparkle. Not too much of that. Could get very carried away here, but I am going to resist the temptation Okay, that's really fun. So I really love the core paints. My final answer on that is they are super, super fun and they really flow into your water and put a mat around that and it is good to go. Isn't that pretty? All right. Thanks for watching you guys. Um, happy painting. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this video. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.